Hi everyone. So today's video, we're going to talk about artificial intelligence application in stock market price prediction. My name is Vanessa. I'm Fiona. Hi. This is Steven. So uh, stock market has always been a very top popular topic, especially under the pandemic. More and more people began to participate in the stock trading market. Therefore, stock price prediction technology has drawn a lot of attention among many different machine learning applications. Any progress in the stock price prediction technology will likely be a game changer in the entire stock trading market. Since machine learning algorithms often achieve a higher accuracy with barely any assumption with, about the input data, expert favors the related methodologies over the others. In the constantly fluctuating stock market, those technologies can help restrict unpredictability and help investors fa with faster decision making. In this video, we'll be talking about stock price prediction in terms of trend, fluctuation, percentage, using the uh, method called random forest. This methodology aggregates the result from individual decision trees. The decision trees are generated via data feeding process using um, historical test price data. Using this technology, tons of time and human effort can be utilized more wisely and some major artificial errors can be avoided. So some reasons why we decided to use random forest is that it's simple, flexible, and accurate in price prediction result. Now I'm gonna give you an overview of how random forest work in stock price prediction. Before we begin to make prediction using the random forest model, we apply some pre-process on the data fil to filter out invalid data. After that, we add the technical indicators which provide us more specific information about the stock price. To create a prediction model for the stock price using the random forest method, we'll need an assemble of decision trees. Each node of the decision tree would correspond to a feature of the stock, such as open and close price. The importance of the feature can be calculated in two ways, guinea-based importance and accuracy-based importance. The weight of each feature shows the level of influence of the feature has on the stock price. Then the model will assign weights to each feature point based on its corresponding importance. After training the model with split data set, we evaluate the model using a small subset of the data. The evaluation metric we refer to are accuracy scores, confusion matrix, and classification report. Next, Fiona is going to talk about some findings in the data set as well as the performance analysis of our prediction model. Now I'll give you guys some overview about the data sets we used. Looking at the chart on the right hand side, on the right hand side, <laughs> um, you can see that there is an imbalanced price distribution um, where most of the stock data only fluctuate about 5%. It does make sense though, because uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, stock prices do only fluctuate within 5%. However, this makes our model prone to overfitting and being less accurate because there could be an imbalance of class distribution between the test set and the data set. Whereas when our model uh, fits well to our uh, training set, it doesn't fit well to our test set because of the imbalance of distribution. Some of the solutions we can use to fix this is include incorporating sentimental analysis and fundamental analysis. I think these two can help our model um, learn more information about the price stock fluctuations that are more than 5%. Moreover, we can also use resampling technique from other libraries where it will help to balance out the imbalance class distribution through smoothing. Okay, now let's take a look at the graph on the right hand side. There is no need to look close in detail, but it does give a general idea of the distribution of the features. And through this, we can calculate the correlation between the, each feature and our label. Um, you can see on the left-hand side, the four most correlated features to our label is the relative strength index, the stochastic oscillator, R percent, and the moving average convergence divergence. And next, I'll talk about the performance evaluation. I'm sure you guys are all wondering what our accuracy is. As you can see, our accuracy is 72.6%. Um, we're quite satisfied with this accuracy score, although it's not perfect, obviously. 
Some of the important hyperparameters we use is setting the N estimator to 100%. This is very crucial because um, when we set this, the number of trees to larger than 100, it made our imbalance of class distribution more significant, causing our accuracy to go down. And our hyperparameter of max depth of 50 and min sample leave of 12 both help with reducing underfitting and overfitting. Now take a look at the graph on the left hand side. It shows the feature importance of our resultant model from highest importance to lowest importance starting with the relative strength index. As you can see, it matches very well to our data to the data set analysis we did previously. And looking at the right hand side graph is the confusion matrix for our stock prediction model. Unfortunately, as you can see, it does reflect the class imbalance that I've explained earlier. Uh, most of the predictions our model made is um, within the 5% fluctuation range. However, since most stocks do fall into this category, we still achieve a relatively satisfactory accuracy score of 72.6. And now Stephen will take you guys through some of the challenges we've met through implementing our model. So during the development of the model, we have encountered several challenges that blocked the progress. And one typical challenge we have met is the lack of computational power. Given that there are 140,000 rows of data with 30 columns, it takes a long time to train a random forest model on the full dataset. Believe it or not, when we try to train the model locally, the memory just ran out and the program, and the program just committed suicide. So we moved the implementation process into the Waterloo student server. Well, there are only 140,000 rows of data. Why? Which is not like, which is nothing in the world of data science. But why does it use up so much money? memory and time, it turns out that the hyperparameters tuning part should be the main criminal. For the random forest model we used, there are several parameters we need to tune. For each parameter, there are multiple candidates and we have to try them one by one. Originally, with the principle of optimizing our model, we measured the model performance with each permutation of parameters. As you will notice, there are 16,800 possible combinations. This we used three-fold cross-validation. For each combination, we need to train the model three times. Each training roughly requires around 10 minutes. Like, and although the randomized search CV function allows parallel processing with tens of processors, it still requires incredible amount of time. Our solution to this is to simplify the model tuning task. We tuned on one parameter at a time with the other parameters fixed. For example, we tried all possible values of max depth and with the fixed parameters, with the, with the other parameters fixed. For example, there are like with the n estimates, n estimates to be 100, max features to be none, minimum sample split to be 10, and etc. Here we're assuming that the parameters are mutually independent. It's a trade-off between optimization and time efficiency, and I think it's actually worth it. Now we are only need to need to try th 34 combinations, and we're getting to a set of semi-optimal parameters, which are actually enough for the goal of pred predicting the future stock price. And there are several directions for future improvements. Firstly, to improve the performance of large fluctuation prediction, we need to use oversampling on the data set. Duplicating the data corresponding to price collapse or price boom will assign more weights to the large fluctuations, which enables the model to catch such situations in the future. Moreover, we can train another machine learning model and apply stacking strategy to, to further improve the accuracy. Another possible improvement is to include the financial and the sentimental analysis. The current model only includes technical analysis and ignores companies' financial performance and public confidence, which does not tell the whole story. Taking the financial and sentimental analysis into consideration will make the model more sensitive to the stock price change in the future. And this is the end of the presentation and thank you for watching.